Hello my dear learners, welcome to Learn From Home program by Supplemental Volunteer Teachers Organization. So today in this lesson, we will learn about insulation from chapter 2. Within this topic, insulation, we will discuss the following points. Some of the points we will be discussing are definition of insulation, definition of solar radiation, process of solar radiation, earth's albedo, factors affecting insulation, and heat budget. So now, let us learn about the definition of insulation. Uh, as we all know that sun is the main source of heat and energy on the earth. The sun is approximately 6000 degree Celsius and the distance between the earth and the sun is approximately 15 crore kilometer. 15 crore meter. See, a sun is the main source of heat and energy on the earth. The sun is approximately 6000 degree Celsius and the distance between the sun and the earth is approximately 15 crore kilometer. The sun radiates heat and energy in the form of short wave and long wave solar radiation that reaches to the earth's surface and it takes approximately 8 minutes to reach on the earth's surface. So the amount of heat and energy that is radiated by the sun that reaches to the earth, this is called as insulation or we can say that insulation radiant energy from the sun that strikes earth that means the energy that is radiated by the sun that strikes the earth surface this is called as insulation or in short we can say that the amount of heat and energy that comes from the sun and that reaches on the earth this is called as insulation insulation is made up of three words in meaning incoming so meaning solar asian meaning radiation in short we can even say that insulation is the amount of incoming solar radiation on the earth surface and this insulation is measured per square centimeter per minute. So now let me give you all a simple example to help you all better understand insulation. Uh, for example, if I am standing over here and if a fire is burning few meters away from me. I am standing here and the fire is burning few meters away. So the amount of energy or the heat that the fire gives on me, okay, the amount of heat or the energy that the fire gives on me, that process of transfer of heat from the fire to me, that is actually insulation. Now you consider this as me and the fire is burning over here. See, I am standing here and the fire is burning here. So the heat is traveling towards me. And this radiant heat and the energy from the fire that reaches to me. This process is called insulation. So now let us learn the definition of solar radiation. See it is very simple to understand the definition of solar radiation. See what is solar radiation? The amount of heat and energy. The amount of heat and energy radiated by the sun. That is called solar radiation. Or 
the radiant energy see you can highlight this point radiant energy from the sun that is called solar radiation so the amount of heat and energy that the sun radiates all the time in all direction that is actually called as solar radiation so now let us learn the process of solar radiation uh, previously we have learned that sun is the main source of heat and energy on the earth surface the sun gives or radiates heat and energy in the form of long wave and short wave solar radiation and the incoming solar radiation that is received by the earth is received in the form of short wave solar radiation so now with the help of this diagram let me help you all understand process of solar radiation let us consider that the incoming solar radiation that is received by the earth and the earth's atmosphere is 100 percentage so out of this 100 percentage the 34 percentage of the incoming solar radiation is reflected back into the atmosphere Try to listen, you will understand. See, out of the 100% of the incoming solar radiation, 34% of the incoming solar radiation is reflected back into the space by the atmosphere and Earth. Out of this 34%, like our atmosphere is covered by clouds, dust particles and the Earth's surface. So, the clouds will absorb and reflect back 25 percentage in the same way the dust particles that are present in the atmosphere reflects back 7 percentage back into the atmosphere and our all surface directly reflects 2 percentage back into the atmosphere that means see the sun is giving the heat 100 percentage heat out of the 100 percentage heat 34 percentage does not reach to the earth it is directly reflected by the atmosphere into the space that means 34 percentage is directly reflected back so out of those 34 percentage 25 percentage is reflected by clouds 7 percentage is reflected by dust particles and 2 percentage is directly reflected by the earth surface so now out of the 100 percentage, 34 percentage is reflected back. Now, the remaining is 66 percentage. So now, out of this 66 percentage, out of this 66 percentage, 19 percentage of the incoming solar radiation is absorbed by the atmosphere. That means, the atmosphere, in the atmosphere, there are several gases. We, we have learned in the composition of the atmosphere and in the layers of the atmosphere. So, the gases or the dust particles, whatever are present in the atmosphere, absorbs 19 percentage of the incoming solar radiation. So, 66 minus 19. Now, the remaining 47 percentage. See, the 47 percentage of the incoming solar radiation directly reaches to the earth or 47 percentage of the incoming solar radiation is absorbed by the earth. So, out of this 47 percentage, 27 percentage is direct solar radiation. Okay. That means the direct heat from the sun that reaches to the earth is 27 percentage and the 20 percentage is uh, absorbed by the earth in the form of diffused and scattered radiation. See, uh, let me help you all better understand. Out of the 47 percentage of the incoming solar radiation absorbed by the earth, 27 percentage is directly absorbed by the earth surface and all the water bodies that are present in the earth 
Okay, now the remaining 20 percentage is scattered and diffuse radiation. Scattered and diffuse means it is scattered like some parts receiving more, some parts receiving less. In that way, it will be received by the earth. So now, in that way, the solar radiation operates on the earth. Now see, out of this, 47 percentage of incoming solar radiation, 6 percentage of the incoming solar radiation is re-reflected by the earth's surface into the atmosphere. I hope you are understanding. 6 percentage of the incoming solar radiation is re-reflected by the earth surface back into the atmosphere. Okay, so the earth surface and the atmosphere total in total it re-reflects 34 percentage plus 6 percentage that is total 40 percentage. See, the amount of incoming solar radiation re-reflected back by the earth's atmosphere and the earth's surface is 40 percentage and this process of reflection of the incoming solar radiation back into the atmosphere or into the space is called as earth's albedo see earth's albedo is the process by which the incoming solar radiation is reflected back into the atmosphere. In short, it can be said that Earth's albedo is loss of insulation. Loss of insulation. So now, let us learn about effective solar radiation. See, uh, previously when we learned over here, 34 percentage is reflected back into the uh, into the space by the atmosphere and the earth surface and the remaining 66 percentage the remaining 66 percentage of the incoming solar radiation that directly or indirectly that directly or indirectly uh, hits up the earth surface and the atmosphere this process is called as effective solar radiation. See, let me repeat again. The remaining 66 percent is of the incoming solar radiation that is responsible for heating the earth's atmosphere and the earth's surface directly or indirectly. It's called as effective solar radiation. Now, let us learn the factors affecting solar radiation. See some of the important factors uh, that are that are responsible for affecting solar radiation are number one angle of sun, number two distance, number three duration of day, number four transpiration. So let me elaborate this point. See angle of the sun. For example, uh, if this is our earth and if this is sun okay as you can see over here the equatorial region the equatorial region is getting the direct rays of the sun whereas the polar regions are getting slanting rays of the sun so as you can see over here from this point and from this point, the angle formed from this point to the sun and the angle formed from this point to the sun, it is varying or differing. So, the more straight angle will be formed between the sun and the, uh, and the place on the earth's surface, the more will be the incoming solar radiation or insulation. If the angle will be more uh, tilted or slanting then the amount of insulation will be less that's why equatorial region uh, has a greater amount of solar incoming solar radiation than the polar regions why due to the 
angle of the sun. And the second point is distance. Second point is distance. As you can see, referring to this same example, okay, the equatorial region it takes shorter time or the shorter distance. That means the distance between this place and the sun it is short, short distance. Whereas the distance between the sun and this point, that is the pole, is long. So shorter the distance, greater the amount of insulation. Longer the distance, lesser the amount of insulation. So the areas where the distance between the sun and the earth is less, those areas will get greater amount of insulation. Those areas which have longer distance get less amount of insulation. So now the third point that is duration of day. Like you all know, during winter season, the day are short, nights are longer. In the same way, during summer season, the day is longer, nights are shorter. So, the longer the day, the greater the amount of insulation. Why? Because the sun will be present in the sky for longer duration of time. So, it can give more amount of heat and energy to the earth. I hope you are understanding. So, greater the duration of the day, greater the amount of insulation. And the third one is transpiracy. See, when the sun gives solar radiation to the earth, if this particular atmosphere, this is the atmosphere, we have studied in the previous lessons, atmosphere, if the atmosphere will be cleared, that means there will be no presence of the clouds, or dust particles then the insulation or the heat radiated by the sun can easily reach to the earth surface but if there will be the uh, presence of the clouds or dust particles okay or many other pollen smoke and other things then it takes longer time in order to reach in presence of the clouds because these clouds will hinder hinder means it will not allow the rays of the incoming solar radiation to easily pass through the clouds so the transparency of the atmosphere is another important factor that is responsible for insulation if the atmosphere will be clear the amount of insulation received by the earth will be more if the uh, atmosphere will be covered by the clouds or moisture then the amount of insulation will be less so try to remember these four factors that affects solar radiation so now let us learn what is heat budget or heat balance so uh, before when we studied the process of solar radiation at the time we came to know that 34 percentage of the heat is directly reflected back into the atmosphere uh, and this 6 percentage back is also reflected back into the atmosphere 66 percentage is observed by the earth surface see when the ref uh, earth reflects back the heat and it also absorbs the heat or the incoming solar radiation in that process what happens is that this reflection of the incoming solar radiation back into the space and absorption of the incoming solar radiation by the earth and the atmosphere it helps to maintain balance and equilibrium okay it helps to maintain balance and equilibrium the heat and temperature of the earth surface all throughout the year this process is called as heat budget or heat balance okay let me give you all a particular definition that is a balance between the insulation received by the earth that means the amount of heat received by the earth and radiation returned from the earth that means the amount of heat reflected back by the earth this balance is called as heat budget or heat balance so my dear learners today 
in this lecture we detailedly discussed about insulation i hope you have understood this hope to see you all in the next class stay safe stay learning thank you